here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for House of the Dragon, Episode 5, Season 1. Um, it doesn't have a name yet, so I don't know what it's called. Uh, but that's probably for the best. I don't want to be spoiling anything. And this is a non-spoiler review. Uh, the director for this episode was Claire Kilner, written by Charmaine the Great, uh, Ryan J. Kondo, and revisions by Sarah Hess. Uh, yeah, this was, a, this was a good one. Uh, so as we left off last uh, week, uh, this is the wedding episode. That's all I'm going to say as far as the plot. This is the wedding episode. Uh, you know, uh, Rhaenyra has finally found uh, who she's willing to marry. Uh, and we're going to go from there. I think we had been waiting for this one for a little while because we didn't know uh, how that was going to play out. Uh, as always, I'll give you a quick um, list of, of some of the main cast. Uh, we have Patty. Considine as King Viserys Targaryen, Matt Smith as Prince Daemon Targaryen, Millie Alcock as young Princess Rhaenyra, and Emily Carey as young Allison Hightower. It is the last episode for both Alcock and Carey as the younger versions of uh, Allison and uh, Rhaenyra. So uh, I'm gonna miss these characters. I'm gonna miss these uh, these uh, actresses. I think they are they're just really really good uh, at what they were doing. Uh, hopefully maybe we get a few flashbacks or something like that, flashback to some conversations that were unseen in the future. But starting next episode, we will have another time jump, a larger uh, time jump. Uh, so we also will have no more of Theonate, who is young, Laner of Valerion. Uh, so we'll, we'll see that. Um, and especially if you saw the previews, you know you know that we're going to have a time jump. Uh, boy. What a what a fantastic fun episode! Uh, sorry, I was not able to review the last one. I, it was a matter of uh, just a big time crunch. Um, although I'm glad I didn't. Uh, it was an episode that took me a second, took me a little while to understand, and also like went to see some of, some reviews from other people, uh, specifically uh, my buddy Kate over at Borwido. Excellent review for episode four. If you want to fully understand and get me a, maybe a little bit more of that, help me understand why I had some issues in the, the you know, some un uncomfortability with uh, episode four. But uh, going back to episode five, uh, it was just a lot of fun. I think you guys know if you are uh, longtime fans of Game of Thrones, wedding episodes are usually the top notch. Uh, and specifically, this is almost kind of like a mini season finale because we do have a. It, it, it is the the end of the road for a lot of these characters and their current versions. Like I said, we're gonna have a time jump, uh, so obviously a lot of things are gonna change. Uh, one thing I'm very intrigued by is how Matt Smith just continues to devour this role of of Damon. He is. As much as I don't want to like the character, and I don't, he's an. He, at this point, I think he's just irredeemable. He's just such a bad dude. Uh, but Matt Smith is just so charismatic that it's so much fun watching him do all the bad shit that he does. Uh, that's really interesting. Like I said, I like, I really like Millie Alcock and Emily Carey's relationship as uh, Allison and Rainier has been through so much since episode one uh, that I can't wait to see how that goes forward. Uh, also, big props to uh, Patty Considine because he is really taking on this. He's the only king I've felt since uh, since Robert Baratheon that I feel a little bad for him because there's a lot happening, uh, and it is it does weigh heavy uh, to wear that crown uh, and sit on that throne specifically, both physically and mentally. Right, it takes a lot, a big toll on him. So. Really, really fun to see him portray that role. Uh, this episode, I do want to commend the camera work and the direction. I love it because although we were... There's there's two big segments of the episode. One where we see our main characters a little bit more separated all over the place, uh, which is an interesting dynamic, not to have them all in the same place. Uh, and then the second part of the episode, which is everything, you know, the big wedding part of it, um, where we have... All these people and all just just everyone showing up to King's Landing and everybody wants something, whether it's like to move up on the ranks, move up in the statue, be in good favor of the king and the queen. And uh, and then even then, there's so many like levels of like just little, you know, being political about stuff and like trying to 
meander their way and just like weasel the way into conversations or or into good favors is really fun uh one of the one of my favorite things is uh, uh as things were happening the director would give us a lot of reaction shots from the crowd and just like i love that pettiness it reminds me of you know one of the things i love about succession is that uh we get to see a lot of reactions of these just i mean these are rich people that just they their problems are way different than everyone else's problems this is the same here in the house of the dragon this is the king and all his like you know his court and all those rich people lords and ladies from all over the realm that have like their main problems are not the regular people's problems they're like oh i need to maintain you know a good social standing and all that dumb bullshit but in the end Every one of them is just as petty as anyone else in the world. It's really, really fun to see. Uh, and I think the direction really showed that. Uh, there was definitely, of course, you know, as the directors and, and the creators said at the end of the episode, in the, I do encourage you to watch those uh, those inside the episode bits that I, at the end. Um, I really like those. Uh, you get a lot of insight. And, you know, like he said, uh, we know that weddings in Game of Thrones never go the way we think they're going to go. So... I was definitely expecting that. So uh, I'm super excited, super invested in the show. I think it's one of my favorite things happening right now, which is the reason why I try to do a review very quickly as soon as the episode is done while it's fresh in my brain. Um, so I'll definitely try to make sure to keep doing reviews every episode. Uh, once again, apologies for not having one for episode four. Uh, so stay tuned in the channel. We'll have more stuff. Uh, including more comic reviews, which are coming out this week, including uh, a special advanced review for Vanish number one uh, from Donna Cates, Ryan Stegman, KLC Press. Uh, and we have a surprise because we asked uh, some of the viewers and some of the friends from the community to send us their video review, uh, and they did that. So our, our video review includes uh, some really cool stuff. Um, so... Uh, as always, thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned because we have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here on the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.